to wonder if this is coordinated, or is it just a good story for the right-wing press? For example, in The Sun on Sunday today, um, it's a whole list, again, of things that he's been accused of doing. They call it shameful, his diary of hate. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 examples. And as I say, it's not as if they come out when he says them. They're all coming out now, bit by bit by bit by bit. So, beginning of this month, August, footage was released showing the Labour leader in 2010, eight years ago, speaking outside the Israeli embassy in London, comparing the situation in Gaza to sieges in the Second World War. I was in Gaza three months ago. I saw the mortar shells that had gone through the school buildings the destroyed UN establishments, the burnt out schools, the ruined homes, the destroyed lives, the imprisoned people, the psychological damage to a whole generation who've been imprisoned for as long as the siege of Leningrad and Stalingrad took place. This is a war crime that is being undertaken, but this time on live television. So that was outside the Israeli embassy in London in 2010, but that only came out, uh, as I say, a couple of weeks ago or became national news. And that comparison that he made there, he then reiterated in an interview. The Palestinian people are, generally speaking, very poor. In the case of Gaza, virtually uh, imprisoned within that very small area and facing the environmental disaster and catastrophe. And in the West Bank, under occupation of the very sort that uh, would be recognised for many people in Europe who suffered occupation during the Second World War with the endless roadblocks, imprisonment, irrational behaviour by the military uh, and the police. So do you think that there is some kind of, if not coordinated, then certainly a united front, which there, of course there would be, you know, if you're, if you're a newspaper or you're a blogger or a, with right-wing leanings or even liberal leanings, you don't want a socialist to become prime minister. The hysteria surrounding this debate, and I'm in no way demeaning how opponents of Mr Corbyn, people who believe in Israel, who believe in the Jewish state, feel about this. I'm, I would in no way be sympathetic with Mr Corbyn and some of his views. However, it's the way in which these stories keep just appearing on a daily basis now. Um, that I think this is why the Tories got so, or a lot of Tories got so enraged by um, Theresa May asking for an apology from, cause, from Boris Johnson because it took away the emphasis and the spotlight on Labour and anti-Semitism, which, you know, I know people say, why are you still banging on about that? Because every day there's a new story and a new allegation about what it is. As I say, well, how many did I say? 17 different examples in the sun today? I mean, we, we've seen all this before, but it just keeps, keeps coming. Jeremy Corbyn sinks deeper into, it's an exclusive, Jeremy Corbyn sinks deeper into the anti-Semitism crisis today as we reveal a damning diary of his meetings with hate preachers and other racists. The Labour leader is now in danger of being overwhelmed by allegations spanning two decades. His past has come back to haunt him in the shape of our 16-year dossier, they say here. Um, there's also various... Um, union leaders who are now saying, come on, you need to really um, look at this problem and you need to, to, to actually apologise for some of the things he's... He's not going to do that. You know, he's always been a lifelong Palestinian supporter and therefore anti-Israel, the, the, the government of Israel. Not anti-Jewish. I don't think he's anti-Semitic. He's just anti the state of Israel and how it conducts its policies, its foreign policies with its neighbours. That's what's going on here. So... I mean, you can talk about the whole debate if you want. I'm more interested to know whether or not you think there is... You know, am I becoming a conspiracy theorist? No, not really. I don't think this is a real conspiracy theory. I think it's a theory, and I think it's probably true. Whether it's coordinated or not, is it being done by some nefarious political underbelly that we never see? I don't know. The dark Westminster? Who knows? 0345... It's all pretty dark, isn't it? 0345 6060 
three. It's hardly discrediting him, says Faye. Uh, even when he's actually on video doing these things, he wasn't pushed in front of a nasty right-wing media at gunpoint. The things he's said, and his members are repulsive, his lack of action on anti-Semitism says it all. Uh, if there is any coordinated campaign, says um, S... Uh, to discredit Jeremy Corbyn, it's one of his own making. He spent decades on the wrong side of most debates and his alliances with dodgy, and I could say worse, people are deservedly coming home to roost. OK, to the phones. 03456060973. Uh, I've felt it for some time, but now I'm definitely smelling a hint of a coordinated smear campaign here. Justified or not, Martin's in Redbridge. What do you think? Good afternoon, Ian. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. That, that's a, that's an outrageous comment that you've made there. Why? To say, to say that this is a coordinated campaign, well, that plays into the um, the old anti anti-Semitic tropes of the uh, Jews controlling the media. Now, uh, you didn't say that. But, but, that's what it plays into. I say it's, poli yeah. it's his political opponents. I'm not saying it's it's a, it's a Jewish conspiracy. That's, that's okay. crazy. Okay, I'm not pointing it. Let's, let's carry on. Okay. Jeremy Corbyn is an anti Semite, right? Okay, that, that 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 is without doubt. Because I'll tell you why. Oh, go on. It crossed, it crossed the line. Where you've gone on about all these uh, 17 things in the sun and all these actions and that, all the, all the mainstream media are doing are exposing truth and facts. Mm. That's what they're doing. That's, that's what you guys get paid for and you do it very uh, well. Let, let, can I... Because I, I, I've spoken to... Uh, on, this, on this subject, I've spoken to rabbis, I've spoken to Jewish scholars, I've spoken to historians who all say criticising the state of Israel is not making you an anti sema If you criticise a Jew... But that, isn't that what he's doing? He criticises the politics of a no. country... No, no, that... no. Let's, let's, okay. let's, just, pick one. Go let's on. just pick one story. Go on, then. Uh, the plethora of stories. Mm -hmm. OK. And it was reported on the time, and it's resurfaced this week, I agree, that he went to Tunisia and he laid wreaths specifically on the... Palestinian no, no. Black September terrorists from Munich, who, who didn't just murder eleven Israeli athletes. Mm. He, they butchered them and they tortured them. They done things that I can't repeat on the radio. Right now, that that has gone from supporting the Palestinian cause, which in his mind is noble and fair enough, and we'd all like the Palestinians to be, be free from the oppression of Hamas. Okay, but what? What he done was he supported the butchering and murdering. No, well, terrorists. he would he would argue, and I'm not arguing this, but that he would argue, I am not remembering them for butchering Israeli athletes. I am remembering them for being killed themselves. Nah, come on. So we're going now going to go around remembering all the IRA terrorists that got killed. Are we going to go around remembering all these ISIS, these ISIS scumbags? That what, what, I'd be interested. I'd, I'd be interested, what about, Martin. What would make, yeah. what would make you change your mind about him? What would he have to do? Do you think to repair some of this damage? Well, well there's, there's one very simple thing that he can do. Yeah, is he can recognise in full and its entirety the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism with all its examples. He says he only has a problem, he has a part of a problem with one of the, is it 11 or 14 definitions? I mean, it's pretty he, close. He has, he has a problem with the one equating uh, Israel to Nazism and a couple of others. But the reason why he has a problem with these is because this week, as we've seen since last Monday and onwards, that the stories that are coming out, he is in breach of those definitions. He himself is the person who who will fall foul of them. Mm. So he would then have to be up by by, by his own conduct committee mm. and in front of the NEC. And so if he went, you you I mean you you, you rightly point out that he was at the, you know, at the graves of these um, terrorists, whatever you would call them, from the Munich Olympics. I'm, I still remember it now, how shocking it was. Would it, would it help in any way if he uh, did a similar ceremony at the graves of the athletes who were killed? 
What the hell did anyone? Anyway? It's a little bit late now. Well, no, I'm trying not to be flippant about it, but yeah, it is a little bit late. But you know, um, forgiveness is I mean, a. It, you, you tell your kids to put the toys away, otherwise, otherwise they're going to go to bed early. They don't put their toys away, and you let them stay up. I mean, you know, but they put them away the next day. Well, I, where, where, where do we go with this? The man is an anti semite He's crossed the line. He lays wigs at the people of. Terrorists that have murdered and butchered Jews. Forget about the Palestinian calls. There are hundreds of that. Our local MP, West Streeting. Sure. I'm sure he would... He's not... Martin, as we always have to do on LBC, he's not here to defend himself. I'm sure he would refute that, but you are well within your rights to have that opinion. Going to have to end it there because I'm going to go quickly to a break. Loads of people want to talk about this. Uh, A lot of you basically saying that Jeremy Corbyn has brought... Whether it's coordinated or not, he's brought it upon himself. And I I think it's his intransigence that gets people so steamed up. It's it's almost like, look, you've got to recognise that what you do 